So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to actually take a step back and we're going to revisit uh, the PMT function. And we're actually going to revisit a few of these functions because that's actually one of the hallmarks of Excel is it has all these mathematical equations stored in it. One of them was that we learned in chapter four, the PMT function. Now the PMT function worked where you gave it something known as a present value. Say for example, Jarrell's restaurant wants to uh, take out a loan of uh, $400,000. We want to pay it off and we want to pay it off in five years quarterly. We want to, unlike you know some loans where you have to pay back every month, uh, Jarrell's loan for the restaurant wants to be, uh, I'm going to make payments every three months. So it's going to be a quarterly payment, which tells me all of a sudden that E8 times F8, number of years times the number of payments per year is going to result in my in per for PMT. It's going to tell me how many payments I'm going to have over the life of this loan. Now the annual rate uh, we actually already built up, it's going to be our F our C5. One of the things I can do is I can hit F4 to once again make that an absolute cell reference. Now one of the things to take note of is since we're going to be dealing with a 7% annual interest rate, that keyword was annual, what happens if I want to go ahead and apply uh, some of the interest rate uh, over the course of the loan? You know, I make a, a payment in June, I should have some interest be applied after June and before June, but on a new loan basis. What I can do is I can take this annual interest rate, this H8 that we've just referenced, and I can divide it by how many loans I plan on making a year. Four. This says that basically now, uh, across the life of the loan, before I get to any new segment pay period of the loan, I should have, roughly speaking, 1.75% of my interest of the year be applied. Now that I've built all of this out, all these kind of plug and play number systems, what I can do is I can come in here and I can actually set my PMT. Notice again, Excel is going to give me a little dialog box explaining my PMT. And as soon as I open up with a parentheses, I get a number of options. The first thing I need to do is my rate, my I8. The second thing I need to do is my in per, my G8. And then finally, my PV. My PV is my present value, my, how much I'm actually getting in my loan. Now you see I do have a few different options, FV and type, and we'll actually skip over those because those are optional tags. As soon as I close off this and I see, and I hit my enter button, I see that it would take me about $24,000 every three months to help pay back this loan in five years. That's a lot of money. I don't have that kind of money. Maybe uh, instead of being an ambitious uh, restaurant tour, uh, maybe I decide that Drell's restaurant should maybe play it a little bit more on the conservative side, maybe not you know try and burn out all the money right away. So suddenly what I'm gonna say is I wanna limit my quarterly payment. I'm willing to pay back my loans at $15,000 a quarter, okay? I still want to do my 400,000 business loan. I think that's still respectable, but I'm going to skip over future value. I want to actually see what the future value of this loan will be. I still want to pay it back in five years. I still want four uh, years each, and I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to auto fill these downward. Because this is a calculation relative this is an absolute cell reference. This is a relative calculation. They all fall into place. Now, one of the things I can do, you notice up here, I'm in my formulas tab. One of the things that I can do is I can actually, instead of going into logical like we were doing last week, I can come over here to financial and I should see an FV option. When I click on FV, all of a sudden you see that I get uh, some new options with the same kind of keywords because what happens is this is sort of the what if I don't finish the loan uh, I want to have a, an ending result what will be my loan if my rate is I9 my number of payments is still 20 I'm making 20 payments my payments and something that we had to calculate before I don't know 
Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to also factor in this PV, this optional tag. I need to say, what was my present value initially? Well, it was initially a $4,000 loan. And so you'll see, all of a sudden, I've got a, a good chunk, of, a negative number here. And when I hit OK, it makes perfect sense. I want the same loan amount. I want to pay back at the same uh, number of times, at the same rate. But I don't want to do it as fast as you're telling me to. So I'm going to still own pretty much over half of the, uh, the loan uh, after five years. So OK. I still want to do these 15,000 payment. That's still a, sorry, negative 15,000. I still want to do that. I still want to apply the same uh, interest rate of 1.75, sorry, because I still want the same four years. There we are. I still want to pay, you know, four times uh, across uh, X number of years. We're actually going to skip over this for a second at $400,000. So all of a sudden, in per. Again, like I was saying, we have all of these different mathematical equations that have already been built for us, these uh, more accounting functions, if you will. Again, I need to figure out the number of payments if this is going to be sort of what I choose to do. So. In this case, all of a sudden, I can go and do in per. Now, in per, again, you're going to see that we have the same options. Rate PMT PV. My rate, still there. My PMT, where are you? And then my present value, my 400000 Again, I can close off that. As soon as I hit enter, we see suddenly I get a big number. I get uh, 36 point two three uh, number of payments now we can round that down but what that basically means is if I'm only going to be paying quarterly that's how many payments I need to have which means that divided by this means suddenly it's going to take me about nine years to pay off this loan okay maybe I still want to do my five years I still want to pay quarterly I still want to do obviously the uh, 20 payments and I still want to do my interest rate and uh, I still want to do all this stuff with this. This is all I can break even with. So if this is all the case, still want to pay it off too, how much should I take off as a loan? How much can I really afford on my loan? How much can I take? Well, again, now we're looking at PV. The same thing we did with future uh, value, FV, in per number of payments in PMT, we have a function available that allows us to do that. Again, financial, we head down to our uh, PV section, and the same thing happens. What's our rate? What's our number of payments? What's our PMT? What's our rate? What's our number of payments? What's our PMT? What's our payments per month? And now what we can see is when I hit something like OK, you see that our loan's a little lower. It's not as big as I was really hoping, as you can see, but maybe it's something we need to factor in on our end a little more.